So we are serving up a lot of highball cocktails here um, over the next couple of days. So we've got three events planned. The first is called Prefix, which um, is kind of a prefix to tales. So come have some, uh, some light bites and enjoy some hip hop and some highballs. The second event we're doing is called Homegrown, where we've taken cocktail bartenders um, from Scotland that have moved out with Scotland and are on the kind of international circuit. And we're trying to kind of amplify uh, what they're doing um, in an event that we're doing at Voyage of Buck on the Monday night. And then the third event we're doing is a basketball game, which we're doing Porter's Gin versus Fernet Branca, which is on the Tuesday. Welcome to the Lush Life Podcast. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, and I bring you the how-to guide for living life one cocktail at a time. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by cocktails ever since. Together, we'll learn from bartenders, brand ambassadors, distillers, and others why certain drinks are popular in certain cultures, how to make the perfect old-fashioned, when to shake and when to stir, and so much more. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let the fun begin. From just the little you've heard from Ben Iravani of Porter's Gin, you might guess this episode is a little different from the others. Last week I was in Edinburgh for Tales on Tour, and Ben was describing just a sample of the three days of events, including lectures, bar takeovers, tastings, and overall fun and festivities being held at the principal hotel Charlotte Square and all over Scotland's capital city. During this episode, instead of meeting just one person, you'll meet a whole slew of people in the drinks industry who, while creating new brands, are also hoping to change the world for the better. Everyone in the business knows Tales of the Cocktail, the cocktail conference which originated in New Orleans almost 15 years ago, and helped kick off the cocktail craze we have today. Every two years since 2011, they've taken themselves on tour to different cities around the world, previously in Vancouver and Mexico City, to spread the word. However, I'm not sure people know that Tales is a foundation, and they are in the process of launching nearly two dozen initiatives for this year alone. Greeting me and everyone who came through the door in Edinburgh was Caroline Rosen, the new executive director for the Tales Foundation. Here in Edinburgh, we were obviously excited to bring a little slice of New Orleans as we kicked it off, but most importantly, we were excited to celebrate the Edinburgh community. This is unlike a lot of the communities in the past where we've been for Tales on Tour. Um, the Edinburgh cocktail scene is one that is absolutely fantastic, and we were just excited to be able to partner with so many of the wonderful people here that have been creating for years and bring in a few other really amazing people from around the world to celebrate that and um, get people excited about hopefully joining us in New Orleans. Now, you said foundation. Yes. So what, do you, what for next year, the years to come, do you hope that will come out of the foundation? You know, with the Tales of the Cocktail Foundation, we're looking to give grants to people in the U.S. and hopefully all over the world that's, that um, not only... Um, not only that help the spirits community, which is really exciting. We've put together a grant committee of 12 individuals who are going to give us their recommendations, and we're opening up um, applications. And would ask any of your listeners to go to talesofthecocktail.org to find and be able to download and apply for one of our grants. Fantastic. The first session of the morning was Coffee, Conversation, and Community, led by the self-titled cocktail empress Lynette Marrero whose idea to promote female bartenders has evolved into one of the top cocktail competitions in the U.S. Uh, so um, my name is Lynette Marrero, and I am one of the co-founders of Speed Rack, which is an all-women's bartending competition that raises money for breast cancer. Um, I've actually been uh, attended Tales of the Cocktail in New Orleans um, for 11 years, um, so I've been a part in seeing the, the whole um, event change and evolve. Uh, this is my second year at Tales on Tour in Edinburgh. Uh, previously I've been to the Mexico City event and um, I wanted to come here this year um, to 
talk about a little bit with uh, have a cocktail conversation with people here about community and what we can do and I think the new focus of the Tales Foundation where there's a lot more focus on the charity aspect really falls in line with a lot of the things I've done like Speed Rack. Um, I'm part of a new uh, board of directors for an organization called the Restaurant Workers Community Foundation and I wanted to bring some of my friends here and, and have a conversation about how you can impact your community because I think our industry and hospitality has the ability to impact our community for ourselves and for others around us in a very positive way through the skill sets we have and mobilizing and we're really good at being very progressive and motivating so I wanted to just kind of spark some conversation with the European market and see you know, what people here are doing and how we can all work together uh, from a global perspective to impact implement those sort of changes and support each other. Fantastic. Community and social awareness was not the only thing on everyone's mind. Sustainability now also plays a huge part in the drinks industry, as was on display at the opening event, Tastes on Tales, the meet and greet where I met a few of the spirits, bitters, and bar brands who were there to introduce their new products. Okay, so my name is Lucas Groglio. I'm from Argentina. And we have the first sustainable bartending project. It's called Coctelería Consciente. Last year, we won a Sustainable Spirit Award by Tales of the Cocktail. Um, and the project is from a bartending company in Argentina called Lo Hacemos Bien. We get it right. And a non-profit NGO called Más Oxígeno, More Oxygen. So we work inserting sustainability into the cocktail industry. We work with bars, brands, and festivals, helping them to be more sustainable. So here at Tales of the Cocktail Edinburgh, we're presenting some Argentinian products. Príncipe de los Apóstoles, that is the first premium Argentinian gin, is made with yerba mate, with grapefruit and peppermint. And also we're presenting Lunfa, that is the first Argentinian vermouth. In Argentina we drink a lot of vermouth, we got to have a lot of Spanish and Italian people, so we love vermouth and it makes sense to make our own first um, vermouth in Argentina. We also have some beaters called Pastinante that are made from a real bartender back in Argentina and we also have some bar tools from Gaston de Gennaro, another bartender from Argentina, so these are tools that are made to last. So this is kind of what we're doing here, we have also some coasters that are recyclable and plantable, so then you can have in your own house some thyme, rosemary or mint to use in your own cocktails. So the idea is to show people that you can insert sustainability everywhere, like you can start recycling, composting, um, being healthier, you know, it, it's everything about sustainability, you have to be sustainable first yourself, then your bar, and then your community, that's how we want to work. And how are you finding the UK? Oh, I love the UK, I have been here last year also for a Taste of the Coxland tour, I really love it, um, I love Edinburgh, it's so beautiful. And the bars, do you think that they're practicing oh, they sustainability? Have, like, well, they have really great bars. I didn't see a sustainability approach yet. I'm trying to find it, but it's hard to find it. Um, so it's tricky because every city is different and they have different treatment of their waste. So bartenders have to get used to every city and know how you can work towards sustainability. Um, if you want to work towards sustainability, but the city you are is not helping you, you can start with your own bar. For example, buying local products. So if you support local producers and you also buy organic um, fruits and vegetables, that's a way to start being sustainable. And then of course, the four R's, you know? Um, first, to reduce, then to reuse, and then to recycle. So that's how we, how we want to do it. I, I said four R's, but I only said three now. You did. Do you know why? Why? Because everybody forgets about the first R, that is rethink. So if you go this way, first rethink that do you really need to use this? It's really a good idea to use it. And if you have to use it, well, can you reduce it? For example, a straw. Do you need to put two straws in a drink? Or with one straw, it's enough. Do you really need a straw? Or maybe you will have a better experience just putting your lips in the glass. You know, so that's why we talk about four R's. First, rethink, then reuse, then reuse and then recycle of course at last because when you recycle something you have to use a lot of resources so that's the last idea thanks so much uh, so i'm ian spooner from one gin uh it's a year ago since we launched one gin at tales here in edinburgh last year uh, one gin um, comes from uh, the same stable as one water one water was launched back in 2005 um, as a bottled water brand expressly to raise funds for water projects globally. 
Um, the brand's raised over £16 million for water projects via the One Foundation. And we were exploring opportunities in the wider drink space um, to help us towards our target of raising £20 million by 2020. And uh, last year we launched a gin. Um, one gin uh, won a gold in the IWSC um, last June. Uh, one of 20 golds out of 379 gins entered. Um, and uh, we've been slowly building since then. Um, the profits go to the One Foundation funding water projects in exactly the same way as the water. It's a, uh, a fresh, savoury gin. So we use nine core botanicals from around the world, plus fresh sage, fresh English sage, which gives it a very savoury, um, refreshing taste. Uh, where can someone find one gin? So we're we're stocked in some of the some of the great bars in the UK, um, all the major UK wholesalers, and we're launching into UK grocery um, this month actually, um, going into Tesco across the UK. So I'm Krista from El Guapo Bitters, and we are here showcasing our bitters and syrups, which are made in New Orleans, Louisiana. All of our products are non-GMO, locally sourced, and vegetarian. We pay a lot of attention to our ingredients and our processes to make them as natural and sustainable as possible. So we're really just here introducing everything to the UK and hoping to find a distributor. Now, I overheard that you won one of your, your bidders yes. won something. So yes. Yes. So in January, El Guapa won two Good Food Awards, one of them for our Chicory Pecan Bitters, which is our most popular product, and also for our Rose Cordial. Uh, those, those two products have also been featured stateside in Southern Living and in Coastal Living recently. So we're starting to sort of expand beyond New Orleans, and we're uh, really just uh, hoping to make the jump across the pond while we're growing in the U.S. as well. So what cocktail would you say that you should put... What was it? The chicory? The chicory pecan. Pecan. Yeah. Yes. So actually in New Orleans, one of our most famous restaurants is Arno's, and they now make an, an El Guapo Old Fashioned. So instead of using an Angostura or Peixos, they put our chicory pecan El Guapo bitters in the drink, and it's really, really good. Uh, it just puts a different spin on it. It's a, it's a pecan and coffee flavor. We use a local coffee roaster named Congregation Coffee that's right down the street from us, and it's one of our most popular and one of my personal favorite products. That's fantastic. Some of the other brands present were so new on the market that this was their first or second outing. So what are you doing here at Tails? Well, I'm launching my business today um, in Tails and uh, letting everyone taste uh, Cushy Doos for the first time ever. So tell me about Cushy Doos. Cushy Doos is a uh, tonic water, premium tonic water with no quinine. So it's quite fundamentally different. It's got a blend of botanicals. Um, it's got Scottish mountain water in it. It's got Scottish heather, Scottish birch. And it's got gentian and wormwood, which it will soon be Scottish too. It's in my garden at the moment, and before I kill it, it's going to go to someone else who can look after it better than me. And so, is, would you use it like in a gin and tonic? Very much in a gin and tonic. At the moment, the most uh, common response, though, is that they would like it drunk on its own. It's, they like it as well. But it's very much geared about uh, helping the gin shine through and helping the gin taste shine through um, and, and making sure that... It's got a smooth, but also a bitter and clean aftertaste. I think some of the other tonic waters that are out there maybe have quite a drying aftertaste, too much citric acid, maybe too much sugar, um, and it's drying on the palate. So this hopefully is fundamentally very, very different and appealing to people. So if someone who's listening to this wants to drink it, where would they find it? Yeah, that? well at the moment, today is day one of launch, and I've been selling in very recently. So where they can find it will be limited places, probably around Edinburgh and very quickly filtering out and filtering out globally as well um, and uh, at the moment you can go to kushidoos.com um, and, uh, and find me there Yeah, no, cool so I'm uh, Kieran Gandhi, I'm the managing director of Lanique Lanique, oh sorry, sorry So what are you doing here at Tails? Uh, we're here to introduce Lanique to all of the people attending Tails and we're also here to really soak up the atmosphere in Edinburgh. And what is Lanique? Lanique is a 200-year-old recipe. It uh, derives actually from a Polish princess in the south of Poland who created it in the 1800s. Uh, she had an amazing distillery and then decided to create a vodka which was blended and steam distilled with rose petals. Um, it was huge during the 1800s and the early 1900s and unfortunately was lost during the war. And then we've brought it back out now and we've rebranded it. Uh, we've recreated the bottle. We've kept to the original recipe. 
uh, totally natural. The colour, the taste, the smell all comes from rose petals. And we're here uh, today and this weekend to, to spread the good message of Lanique. Uh, so we're a company that was founded originally in Edinburgh and we ship cocktail kits all around the UK. So we thought it'd be a great environment and experience to come along and obviously, you know, network and enjoy, you know, everybody in the industry. It's obviously a great experience to sort of have tales coming to Edinburgh and when you're from Edinburgh, you sort of need to jump on that experience. And can you tell me about uh, your product? Of course. So Tipple Box is, uh, we're actually, we're voted the UK's Best Buy cocktail kit. So we source uh, cocktail uh, ingredients from all around the UK, working with spirits such as rums, gins, vodkas, and we uh, basically source ingredients to make up recipes. So we ship two recipes per box. You can subscribe to Tipple Box monthly, or you can send it as a one-off gift. Um, and typically, we uh, have started to add additional features to Tipple Box, like Model Magazine, which is all done in-house, um, where we talk a bit more about the products, share their brands, but at the same time, also share us a bit of industry knowledge. And you include recipes just in case, right? We do. So um, all of our boxes include two recipes, and we include all the ingredients you really need to make up those uh, recipes at home. Um, and we provide our customers with everything they need except from the fresh ingredients. And how can they find you? How can we find? How can you find me? Yes, uh, you, how can can find you? <laughs> you can find me at tipplebox.com, um, where you know again you can subscribe directly, or you can sell, you can uh, buy as a gift for for one of customers. It's our first time at Tails. Um, we've just launched this new exciting Irish cream liqueur called Cremor, which is unique insofar as it can float on a wide range of beverages. And we're very excited to showcase it here in Edinburgh for the first time. And so I heard that you guys were making ice cream before. We've been making ice cream for about 40 years in County Cork in Ireland and um, also cream liqueur mainly for other brands. But this is our first foray with our own brand. It's a unique liquid that we have developed about a couple of years ago and now we've just brought it out into the market and we've decided to uh, to go our, on our own way and try and promote it ourselves. So we've picked about five or six different markets around the world and we're just picking up distribution and concentrating mainly on the on trade. So where could someone get it now? You can get it in Ireland, you can get it in... Um, travel retail in Scandinavia and we're actually uh, launching it in New York and Boston. We've just hired a brand ambassador so we should have our first product on the shelves by June, July time. I can't wait. Neither can we. <laughs> You've now heard from just a fraction of the people I met in a very short time many of whom I plan to have on this very show, so watch out for them in upcoming episodes. I hope I've whetted your appetite for Tales of the Cocktail, which will be in New Orleans this summer from July 17th to the 22nd. I hope to be there too. I know this has made us all very thirsty, so now it's time for our Cocktail of the Week. This year, it's the tricentennial of the city of New Orleans, so I've picked the tricentennial Old Fashioned by El Guapo Bitters for our Cocktail of the Week. In a mixing glass filled with ice combined, 0.25 ounces of El Guapo Creole Orgiat, 0.25 ounces of Amaro Maletti, two generous dashes of El Guapo Tricentennial Bitters, and two ounces of Jim Beam. Stir until well chilled, and strain into a low ball or coop over a large ice cube. Then garnish with an orange twist and rosemary sprig. You'll find this recipe and all the cocktails of the week on alushlifemanual.com, where you'll also find all the ingredients in our shop. I want to thank everyone at Tales of the Cocktail who invited me to join them in Edinburgh. If you're interested in applying for one of their grants, please go to their website, talesofthecocktail.com, or check the link on my post. Also, I would like to thank the Principal Hotel on Charlotte Square for all their generosity. If you would like information on everyone you've heard on the episode, plus their products, go to my site, alushlifemanual.com. If you've liked what you've heard today, then please rate us on iTunes. It really helps. Thank you. Next week, we'll be in the studio with David Walwork from Freya, the award-winning birch syrup that's sustainably sourced 
and distilled from wild birch tree sap and named for the Norse goddess of love, life, and beauty. Until next time, bottoms up. Thanks for listening to the Lush Life Podcast, the sister of A Lush Life Manual. For more information and links to everything you heard, plus a bit more, please visit alushlifemanual.com. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. Lush Life is produced by Evo Terra. And I'm your hostess, Susan Schwartz. I'll see you at the bar.